the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. A great discovery has been made at Salad Dressing Headquarters. Kraft has created a superfine salad and cooking oil for you to use at home. It's called Kraft Oil, a lighter-bodied oil that blends faster and better with the other ingredients your recipes call for. There's never been an oil like it before. Get a bottle of Kraft Oil tomorrow, the most wonderful oil ever created for salad dressing. Finest baking and frying in lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Recently, he stopped dating Grace Tuttle to get away from her bothersome brother, Sidney, but like a bad penny, Sidney turned up again when Leela Ransom came to town and has developed into quite a rival. Fine dinner, Bertie. Thank you, sir. You ain't in a hurry. Are you going out again tonight? Yes, I'm taking Mrs. Ransom to a movie. Yes. Who oh, knows if he doesn't take her out, Sidney will. Now, Leroy, any more coffee in the pot, Bertie? Yes, sir. Drink a lot of coffee, Unc. What's this? What the place you've been going, you might fall asleep in the movie. <laughs> Leroy, your uncle ain't going to fall asleep when he's sitting next to Miss Ransom. <laughs> <laughs> No, indeed. No kidding. Do you really look at the picture? <laughs> okay. Mr. Gilsey, if you don't mind, I'll start clearing off the table. You go right ahead, Bertie. I'll finish my coffee and be on my way. Yes, sir. You going so early? Yep. I don't want to keep Mrs. Ransom waiting. Well, that's right. You want to get there before Sidney does. I'm just punctual by nature, my boy. Hey, why don't you take the dog with you? The dog? To keep that wolf from her door. <laughs> Leroy, Sidney Tuttle isn't a wolf. He's just a black sheep in wolf's clothing. <laughs> yeah, I better get going. Hey, Bertie, can I give the rest of the roast to the dog? Leroy, that dog weighs 140 pounds now. Yeah, I wonder if Cousin Bird sent me the dog all the way from Canada because he likes me or because he couldn't afford to feed him. He sent him because he likes you. He said you and the dog had the same big brown eyes. <laughs> yes, yes. Leroy, why are you following? I want to get the dog in. Here, boy! Here, boy! Say, we have to think of a name for that dog. We can't just call him boy. Well, he is a boy. We still have to give him a name. Yeah, we'll get a good one. Here, boy! Here, boy! <laughs> well, I can hear him, but I don't see him. Oh, well, there he is, sitting on the front seat of your car. Oh, my goodness. Climbs in every chance he gets. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have driven him out to see the reservoir. Come on, boy. Get out of the car. Come on. I can't pull him out, huh? Look at him brace his feet. Well, I'll get him out. I'll walk around the other side and push while you pull. Okay. Now, dog, get off the seat. Pull, Leroy. I'm pulling. Yeah. Right, George, you won't budge. Well, you know how stubborn the Gildersleeves are. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I have an idea, Leroy. You going to leave the car and walk? No, you pull and I'll push. And then at the count of three, we'll reverse. Yeah? And then you push and I'll pull. That'll catch him off balance. Okay, let's go. All right. One, two, three, push. Here he comes. Here, watch it, dog. Don't fall on me. Oh! oh. Hey, it worked. Get off me, dog. <laughs> You're shedding. Leroy, brush me off. Okay. You're smart, huh? Yeah, I'm not so sure. My blue suit looks like a camel's hair coat. <laughs> Good it did me to get to Leela's early. I've been waiting for her to come downstairs for half an hour. I'll be down in a minute, Frost, my 
Take your time. Now, why'd I say that? Oh, well. Leela's worth waiting for. Here I am, Rob Martin. Hmm. <laughs> I'll say she is. How do I look? Beautiful. But it's a shame to waste a dress like that in a dark movie. Well, I believe in a girl putting her best foot forward, even if she's appearing in the dark. <laughs> I must say, you look handsome. I just love a man in a pinstripe suit. Well, thank you. Uh oh. It's Rock Martin. I'd better brush you off. What? It's a good thing Leela isn't the jealous kind. What do you mean? You've got a brown hair on your coat lapel. What have you been up to, you heartbreaker, you? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. I had them all over my coat before I came over here. What's wrong, Martin? Yeah, uh, Great Dane was in the car, and when I tried to pull him out, he fell on me. Well, they say there's always a simple explanation, and that sounds pretty simple. <laughs> oh, Leela? If we're going to the movies, we'd better get started. Well, I just have to take time to change my purse. Change your purse? Sit down, Frock Martin. Is that better? This looks like it'll take quite a while. See, at lipstick, compact, house keys, pillbox, fountain pen, flashlight. You have more things in your purse than Leroy carries in his pocket. Well, an attractive girl has to be prepared for any eventuality. Now, where's my mad money and my police whistle? Police whistle? <laughs> Leroy, don't call the police. We'll never get to the movie. Oh, there's the phone. Hey, the police are on the job, aren't they? Oh, silly. Will you answer it, Rock Martin, while I finish packing my purse? You bet. Hello? Hello. Is that you, Rock Martin? Oh, my goodness. Sidney Tuttle. Who is it, Rock Martin? Uh, wrong number, Leela. Sorry, wrong number. I do not have the wrong number. Let me talk to Leela. Ophelia? Nobody here by the name of Ophelia. Sorry. Why don't you call information? Now, Throck, please. We'd better go, Throck, now, and tell him to hang up. Okay. Sidney Leela says for you to hang up. <laughs> Why, Throck, now, Hello? Throck, Morton? Throck, Morton! Oh, he hung up on me. He thinks he's pretty clever, the big porpoise. I've got to figure out some way to keep him away from Leela. Hey. Sis? Grace? What is it, Sidney? Whatever happened to that nice fellow who used to call on you so often? Throckmorton? Yes, the water commissioner with the big cigars. Oh, I think he's interested in some other girl. Oh, really? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Why should you be sorry? Well, I just hate to see my own sister lose out. I hate to see another girl take your boyfriend. <laughs> I haven't given it a moment's thought. Throckmorton doesn't mean that much to me. And I'm not the least bit interested in his girls. Who is she? Her name is Leela Ransom. She's an attractive blonde widow from the deep south. Oh. I saw her on the street the other day. <whistles> well, she must be quite a girl. How old is she? Well, it isn't how old she is. It's how young she looks. She sounds giddy to me. She probably dyes her hair. Well, I don't know what she does, but she's a honey. You're a smart school teacher, sis, but you ought to take a few lessons from Leela before school's out. I have no intention of competing with her. Of course, I hate to see a nice man like Trotmorton being taken in by the wiles of a woman like Mrs. Ransom. Well, it would be nice if you could save him. I wonder what time he leaves the water department every afternoon. Five o'clock. <laughs> Five o'clock. Plenty of time to go home and take a little nap before dinner. Then I'll be bright and witty when I want to hop over to Leela's tonight. 
see. Do I know that girl waiting at the corner? Looks like Grace Tuttle. Grace! Why, Rob Morton, how nice to see you. And what a surprise. Yes, indeed. It's been quite a while. Are you waiting for someone? Oh, no, no, just resting. I don't blame you. Loaded down with all those books. How nice of you to offer to carry them for me. What? Here, I was just returning them to the library. Well, I'm glad to help you up the steps with them. I just love good books, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. I envy you, Throckmorton. Oh? With your office so close to the library, you must be running in and out of here all the time. Well, not so often. We don't have many books on water. <laughs> I'll hold the door open for you. Thank you. Hmm, pretty empty. The library isn't doing much business. I love it here. It's so blissfully quiet. Why don't we sit in the corridor and talk? Well, for just a minute. Well, Morton, I'm delighted to hear that you're so interested in books. Well. So many busy men cease to use their minds after five o'clock and become occupied with the frivolous things. Yeah, a lot of them do, I guess. They just float down the river of life like so much flotsam. Yeah, and gypsum. <laughs> Scott Morton, have you ever thought how nice it is that we have so much in common? Well, I hadn't given it much thought. You like the same things, concerts, lectures, good books. Just think this library is filled with rich treasures, all ours for the afternoon. Well, you have to pay dues, don't you? Scott Morton, be serious. Would you like to spend an evening with me reading the classics? Me? So few men have your capacity for appreciating the finer things in life. They lack your deep sensitivity. Well, I'm sensitive, all right. <laughs> Why don't we meet here at 8 o'clock tonight and browse? 8 o'clock? Well... I can't wait. I can just hear your splendid voice as you read Byron, Swift, and Emerson. You can? I have Emerson here. You must read something from the snowstorm. Well... Here it is. Begin at the top of the page. If you say so. I'll close my eyes and listen. <clears throat> Life is too short to waste in cryptic peep or cynic bark, quarrel or reprimand. Up, mind thine own aim, and God speed the mark. Beautiful, Clark Morton. It wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> I've heard Emerson a thousand times, but I've never been so thrilled. Really? Can we meet here at 8 o'clock? Well, let's make it 7.30. Like Emerson says, life is too short to waste. <laughs> I'll be home early, Leroy. Okay. Right after the library closes. The library? Yeah, that's right. I'm meeting Miss Tuttle there at 7.30. Oh, brother. Meeting a school teacher in a library. What an evening. No, Leroy. I owe a lot to Miss Tuttle. She opened my eyes. I thought Mrs. Ransom did that. <laughs> well, I've been taking stock of myself. I realize I've been wasting my time at frivolous pursuits. Yeah? From now on, I'm going to spend more time with Miss Tuttle at lectures, concerts, and reading good books. I'm going to improve myself. No kidding. Good night, my boy. Good night. Strange how the course of a man's entire life can be changed by a chance meeting. Imagine me bumping into Grace in the corner this afternoon. Opened a whole new vista to me. She was fascinated the way I read. <laughs> Very intelligent girl. Miss Gasly! Yes, Bertie? I thought maybe you'd like to take Miss Ransom's handkerchief to her. Miss Ransom's handkerchief? She left it here the other night. Well, I'm not seeing Mrs. Ransom tonight. No, sir? Yeah, that's Leela's handkerchief, all right. Yes, but she sure uses elegant perfume. Maybe I should stop by for a minute. Yes, <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. 
Does your pie crust always turn out crisp and flaky and tender? If your score isn't so good in this department, here's welcome news from the Kraft Kitchens. They've developed a recipe that makes perfect pastry every time, and it's as easy as whipping up biscuits. The secret is Kraft Oil, the superfine liquid shortening. When you use Kraft Oil, there's no tedious cutting in, no guessing as to when the mixture is right. Kraft's exclusive superfining process makes Kraft Oil a lighter-bodied oil. It blends quickly and completely throughout the dough. There aren't dry spots without shortening. To make pastry with Kraft Oil, sift together two cups of flour and one teaspoon salt. Next, measure out one-half cup of Kraft Oil and add five tablespoons of ice water. Beat with a fork until creamy and pour immediately over the entire surface of the flour. Toss and mix with a fork and then form the dough into a ball. Divide in half, roll out between wax paper, and your crust is ready for the pan. Believe me, Kraft Oil pastry is bound to get you compliments. Drop a postcard to the Kraft Kitchens for the printed recipe. The address is Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. And tomorrow, get a bottle of Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for baking, frying, and salad dressing. Lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Last night, he was on his way to the library for a literary evening with Miss Tuttle when he decided to stop by Leela's for a minute. Unc, you mean you didn't even get to the library? Of course I got there, Leroy. But when I did, it was closed. What a character. And this morning, it's a puzzled Miss Tuttle who makes her way to Peavy's pharmacy. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Miss Tuttle. What can I do for you this morning? I just want to get some stamps. Well, my stamp machine is out of whack for the time being, but I have a few in the cash register. Thank you, Mr. Peavy. Would you uh, care for the twos, threes, or would you like to step up into something a little more expensive, like the six-cent one? <laughs> I'll take two airmail stamps, please. There are. The airmails have an airplane on them. <laughs> Here's your 12 cents, Mr. Peavy. Thank you. You, uh... Just met Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh? He was in for some cigars. Then he didn't pack his duffel bag and go to see. How's that? Mr. Gildersleeve was supposed to be at the library last night, but he failed to show up. Oh, he told me he spent the evening with the widow Rand. Will that be all, Miss Tuttle? <laughs> well, except for one thing, I'm a little curious about this widow Ra 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 Ra. Perhaps we should strike that from the record. Excuse me, Miss Tuttle. Touch me. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mrs. Ransom. Mrs. Ransom? So this is what keeps him away from libraries. How are you this morning, you cute little old man, you? <laughs> well, hush my mouth. <laughs> What can I do for you, Mrs. Ransom? Well, I, I want to get some cosmetics, but you go right ahead and wait on this other lady. I'm in no hurry. I'm fascinated. Oh? With the stamps. She, she just bought some airmail. Now, uh, what kind of cosmetics can I show you, Mrs. Ransom? She's wearing more than he has in the showcase. <laughs> uh, I want to see some lipsticks and some rouge. Yeah, well. You care to look over the tray here? Oh, thank you. You don't need any perfume, I take it. Oh, gracious, no. Throckmorton's always showering me with it. I think she's been bathing in it. <laughs> uh, this will be all, thank you. Very well. Can I put them in a bag for you? Oh, no, I'll just drop them in my purse. Uh, will you charge this to my account, Mr. Peavy? Oh, happy to. Bye now. Goodbye. So that's handsome ransom. <laughs> Yes, that's Mrs. Ransom. Under the circumstances, I, I didn't know if I should introduce you. No, I had sufficient introduction. Thank you, Mr. Peavy. Any stamps all you need, you say? Well, this comes as a grim realization, but I may need some other things. Very well. Push that cosmetics tray my way and break out your stock of perfumes. My, my. <laughs> Leroy? Go 
to the library tonight? Well, no. Since you didn't get there last night, I thought you might go tonight. No, I'm seeing Mrs. Ransom. Hey, what did Miss Tuttle say about your not showing up at the library? I haven't talked to her today. Didn't know what to say, huh? Well, I really must apologize for my unavoidable delay. Unavoidable? <laughs> okay. Miss Gale, please. Yes, Bertie? I know what you can tell, Miss Tuttle. Oh? You can say on the way to the library you got detoured and have to take the southern route. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, you're really in the middle, aren't you? Uh, Leroy, I'm late for Leela's now. Goodbye. Oh, it is! <laughs> if it's for me, I've already left, Bertie. I'm uh, Miss Gilsey's address. Yes, ma'am, he's here. Over. Miss Gilsey's telephone! Bertie, I said I wasn't home. Too late, didn't you? Hey. <laughs> oh, dear. I wonder who it can be. Hello? Martin, this is Grace Tuttle. Well, hello, Grace. I've been wanting to talk to you about last night. Well, I knew you'd try to call me, but I've been out shopping. That's why I'm taking the liberty of calling you. Well, I'm glad you did. You seem so interested in the books we were discussing yesterday. I brought some home for you. Oh? Would you like to come over for them? Well, I don't think I can make it tonight. Uh, just a minute, Grace. What is it, Leroy? You want me to cut the wire and get you out of it? it... <laughs> no. Uh, now then, Grace. Oh, Morton, uh, I'm going to be terribly disappointed if you don't pick up the book. Well. It sounds as if you're busy this evening, but you don't have to stay. Oh, well, I'll be right over. I'll be waiting. Bye, Frog Morton. Ta ta, Grace. Oh, well. Pretty close call, huh? Not at all. I'll just drop by, pick up the books, and leave. What if she wants you to read to her again with that beautiful voice of yours? That is a possibility. Let's see now. Yeah, I know. I'll take the dog with me. Tell Grace I've had him out for a walk and have to get him home. What a brain. Yeah, thank you. Where is the dog? I'll get him. Here, boy! <laughs> I'm taking you for a walk. Now, don't rear up on me. <laughs> what a big dog. You want his leash, huh? Just bring me a bridle and I'll ride him over. that I can't leave the dog tied out front. And then I can be at Leela's in a couple of minutes. You're sly, Gildersleeve. Well, Frog. Oh, it's you, Sidney. Come in. Sis will be out in just a moment. Yeah, that's all right. I just came by to pick up some books. Go right in. I'm just leaving. There's no reason to rush off, Sidney. Well, under the circumstances, I think I'd better. See you around, Frog. Well... Goodbye. Say, he's got the lights down low. That isn't the kind of music Grace usually plays. She prefers stuff like Grand Opera. I'll be right on, Rock Morton. Good. I have the dog waiting outside, Grace. You have what outside? I have the dog. The dog. The dog. The dog. The dog. Grace. What's the matter? Nothing. But your eyes, your hair, your dress. Oh, it's been so long since I've worn this dress, I thought I'd slip into it tonight. It's beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. Let me take your hat, Throckmorton. You shouldn't twist it up in your hands like that. <laughs> There. Won't you sit down? Maybe I'd better for a minute. Grace? Hmm? Haven't you changed your perfume? You think it's too heady and daring? Not a bit. 
Yeah, I always say if you're going to wear perfume, why hide it under a bushel? I was hoping you'd approve. You bet. Well, I suppose you'd like to pick up the books. The books? Uh, the ones you came over for. Oh, the books. <laughs> well, there's no hurry. Here's one I think you might like. You? Yeah? Well, let me see. Latin love lyrics. Well. You don't want to stay here with me and read tonight. Well, I might be able to stick around tonight if I go make a phone call. <laughs> you know where the phone is. Uh, excuse me, Grace. My George, I've never seen Grace look so gorgeous. I'll just phone Leela and make it another night. <laughs> Yeah, Gildersleeve, you're a lucky fellow. You've got a girl on both ends of the line. Hello? Sydney. Oh, hello, Frog. How did you get over to Leela so fast? I ran over. <laughs> I can't win for losing. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you're mixing up French dressing or baking, it's important to get a perfect blend of all the ingredients. And that's why good cooks everywhere are using Kraft Oil in their recipes. Kraft Oil is a delicate, lighter-bodied oil, the only oil that's super fine to make it blend faster and better. You'll be prouder of your homemade salad dressings, your cakes and cookies, and all fried foods when you begin using Kraft Oil. Get a bottle tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Jonas, please. <laughs> Looks like your date left early this evening, huh? Well, it's a school night, and Miss Tuttle has to be on the job early, you know. You weren't dating Mrs. Ransom tonight? No. I just drove by, and that darn Sydney is still over there. You don't say. What a pushy fellow. Doesn't know enough to go home. Peavy, will you do me a favor and help me get him away from there? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I was just about to close out. Yeah, this only take a minute. How about phoning over there and saying you're a policeman? Policeman? Hey, tell Sidney there's a prowler around his apartment. He'd better hurry home. Well, I, I'd like to help you out, Mr. Gildersleeve, but what if he recognized my voice? Oh, give it a little Irish brogue, Petey. The way you did at the Elks picnic last summer. Nobody would ever recognize you. <laughs> I was pretty good, wasn't I? <laughs> Come on, Petey. I'll dial the number. Well, big guy, I'll give it a try. Yeah, the boy. Yeah, and take the receiver. Hello? The top of the evening to you, lady. May I have a word with Mr. Sidney Tuttle? Oh, hello, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good night, folks. <laughs> is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, Pinto Kalvig, Mary Shipp, Byron Kane, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Neekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. 
tonight play You Bet Your Life on NBC.